Today, we continue our conversations on being as you are, living meditation, being as I am. And specifically, I would like to focus on how true self-acceptance transforms the individual self-image to be the true self-image, which manifests automatically as what I like to call true self-expressions. The wonderful harmonious relationships, the wonderful harmonious business, the wonderful harmonious life experiences as far as the senses perceive in increasing frequency on a continuous basis. Thus, I titled today's conversation mind map, The True Self-Image. Inspired by the following quote here from Pamahansa Yogananda, in which he said, Self-realization is the knowing in all parts of the body, mind, and soul that you are now in possession of the kingdom of God. So now is where we realize self. And by self-realization, it is referring to your sense of self that transcends Let's look at the Robert Dilt's logical levels here. Your vision, your personal identity, values and beliefs that the individual may be identified with, skills or capabilities, behaviors and environment. You here exist beyond the concepts in mind, the identity, which part of the identity is the self-image, which I would like to further explore today. And knowing that you exist here, above, or you transcend all of this, self-realization is the acknowledgement of, as we say, I and the Father are one. I and the Father are one. Now, also what we've been discussing is this entire experience and phenomena of life is a meditation. We talked about this recently in a video last week. I'll link the description to it. See, this world first appeared to you, and it persists to appear the way it does to you based on identification identification to beliefs that were formed that make up the identity and the self-image, which play out automatically as the outer experiences of life. Your relationships with others, the various activities that you do each day, for example, skill cultivation, let's say you are learning how to dance, your ability to be in flow, which is being as you are. The degree of flow is revealed based on how you relate to the skill cultivation. For example, I took up snowboarding a number of years ago. And one of the things that I did was I became really present to the experience of learning it total beginner. And one of the reasons why I did this is I've proved everything that we've been talking about over the years on this channel for myself, building three successful businesses, personal relationships, skill cultivation, etc., and also working with thousands of others. Yet there's always an opportunity to learn something new in which we can be present to the process and observe how we're relating to the experience. Now, having released identification to a lot of limiting, restrictive beliefs about myself and the experience of learning and also the outer experiences of life, which includes relating with others, relating with environment, behaviors, skills, etc., Having released identification to untrue beliefs, what happened was I was aware 
that I was cultivating the skill while in flow. So there was no perfectionism. There was no comparing myself with others, which these kinds of behaviors would have manifested prior to learning this information, prior to acquiring the understanding of the subconscious mind and auto-suggestion, as well as the sixth sense chapter, which I would like to touch on a little bit today from Thinking Grow Rich. So notice this when it comes to living meditation, which by the way, living meditation is an interesting term, which I called it at one point active meditation. But one of my clients, Kate McGuire, called it living meditation. So I like it. So I'm going to refer to you experiencing life as a living meditation. Her name is Kate McGuire, and she converts old garments into new and teaches others how to do this. And she focuses on a sustainable future for fashion. I'll link in the description to her Instagram so you could check out her work. So living meditation every day in relation to the various experiences that you have in life, in relation to people, environment, circumstance, and information. You can be as you are, present to the experience, and be aware of what you're relating to the experience, revealed in behaviors, emotions, and thoughts. Thoughts reveal what beliefs are identified with. Emotions reveal what beliefs are identified with. Behaviors also reveal what beliefs are identified with. And if they're not authentic and true to who you truly are, I've been calling this true self-acceptance, you can in that moment release identification to it by being still and knowing that I am. And if the belief seems persistent, you may turn it into auto-suggestion. For example, if the persistent belief is people distract me while I am working on my creative initiative, you could say more so each day in my experiences with others, I acknowledge they let me be as I let them be. As a result, creativity flows, and I'm able to remain lightheartedly focused on my initiatives. Now, as mentioned, living meditation. The world first appeared to you and persists to appear the way it does to you based on identification. You keep your attention oriented from your vision here in relation to the experiences of life, the skill you're cultivating, your business initiatives, your conversations with others. You operate from the end by being aware of what you are relating to the experiences. And if identification occurs, revealed again, as mentioned, in thoughts of doubt, uncertainty, fear, or emotions in which emotions reveal, for example, some might say anxiety, well, anxiety may be transmuted over to excitement. I mentioned that in my earlier stages of public speaking, I would experience emotions in a way where I would call them anxiety in relation to speaking publicly. The day leading up to the event, the night before, anxiety-based emotions. Now, understanding that the emotions were revealing a belief, a number of beliefs that I brought to awareness that were not true and authentic to who I truly am, I was able to release them via auto-suggestion. The belief was, one I'm thinking of particularly, was fear of criticism. I was afraid at that particular time that if people did not receive my information in a particular way, then I would not feel accepted by them. Now, this is inwardly in my own mind relating to the experiences. 
and labeling it accordingly, subconsciously. So emotions brought awareness to the belief. And through an auto-suggestion, I released identification to the belief. And then I experienced excitement, the emotions which I would call excitement, in relation to public speaking, and still do till this day. So emotions are energy in motion. We let them be. And they also reveal, because they're part of the human experience, and they also reveal what beliefs we are identified with. So, the living meditation. Notice, if you cling to appearances, for example, they appear to cling to you. If you dissolve identification to the appearance, the appearance rearranges or it disappears. It rearranges to reflect your vision. The appearances of the world are the effects of the one universal cause and substance of the entire phenomena of life that I am. I and the Father are one. You realize thyself is transcendent to all of this and also understand the true nature of thyself. And begin to experience what I refer to as a living embodiment of true self-acceptance. We acknowledge that the true self is love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, being one with the Father. So the appearances of the world are the effects of the one universal cause and substance of the entire phenomena of life, that I am. The all that knows all, sees all, animates all, and appears as all that appears through prayer, as we were discussing in our Neville Goddard conversations. What do we say of that I am in mind? The all in all, that is the all. The Father. Now, by transcending the identifications of the individual that appears, the I, it is realized that I and the Father are one. Because the individual may be identified with beliefs, which an identity is made up of beliefs, and the self image is made up of beliefs, which Self-image refers to a mental picture or perception that the individual has of the individual self, which is made up of beliefs. This is how the individual sees themselves personally and relates to their abilities, qualities, characteristics, etc. And the identity is a broader sense of self that includes the self-image and also our relationship to others and the world. It encompasses the world view as well. Thus, we see here from a vision, which is what a person commits to, a definite chief aim, a definite major purpose, where they see themselves in their imagination as a realized version of thyself in imagination, to actualize that self in and as the outer expressions of life, which include the environment, behaviors, capabilities. That transforms the identity and the self-image. Now, the I, the individual self, is one with the Father, the All. In experiences of flow, while you're in flow, you may experience that you lose your sense of the individual I. You experience what we refer to as one with all, one with the Father, being as you are. 
You may also experience that, certainly I do, in meditation. And I do the Vipassana meditation. I'm going to link in the description to the Vipassana meditation that I've been doing since 2008, 20 minutes a day. Sometimes I do it longer, sometimes a few times during the day. And the rest of my time is in living meditation. I live the meditation in my day-to-day -day life, in my relationships, etc. And the way I live the meditation is I remain oriented from my vision in a lighthearted way. And I'm aware of what appears in mind, the individual mind, the thinking, aware of emotions, behaviors, etc. This reveals if there is identification, which is beliefs brought to awareness. So I can tell with tension or reactivity or attachment to appearances. Now, if there is attachment or identification, attachment to appearances is the result of identification to particular beliefs. I, in the moment, be still and know that I am. Being in flow and also in meditation, we experience self-transcendence. So here we have Maslow's hierarchy of needs. At the bottom, we have physiological needs, safety needs. Then we have belonging and love needs. Above that, esteem needs. Self-actualization, which is what we discuss on this channel. Realizing thyself, knowing thyself to be, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, and actualizing that in and as the outer expressions of life. See, as mentioned, by transcending the identifications of the I, the true self is realized. You understand experientially that you transcend as you are here. All the beliefs. So you can change your beliefs. You can change your self-image. You can change your identity. So knowing that you transcend, it is also realized that I and the Father are one. Then you have found the promised land. And it is clear what it is meant then in Joshua 1, 3. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. We realize then, there's only God, only God appearing, and only God appearing to animate all that appears through what appears as the individual mind, particularly what the individual is planting in mind, thoughts, which manifest as the outer experiences of life. And that is what I mean by what do I say of that I am? What does the individual say of the all? Which again, knows all, sees all, animates all, and appears as all that appears through prayer. As stated in Matthew 6.6, 6, But when you pray, go into your room, which is within. Close the door, disentangle your mind from the evidence of the senses, and pray to your Father, who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret, will reward. Now, the true nature of self is love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. True self-acceptance. As we accept self, the personal identity and the self-image begins to transform. The way I did this was committing to a vision I came across this information in 2004 with Thinking Grow Rich. And he said, commit to a definite chief aim. 
So I created a definite chief aim. At that particular time, it was to no longer be in $50,000 debt. That was my first definite chief aim. So I committed to it. I followed the instructions in the book. I applied auto suggestion and I actualized that vision, actualized it. What I also realized was happening as only God gives the desires of the heart and fulfills the desires of the heart, the individual that appears accepts what they desire through prayer as already realized. So what I realized what was happening on the journey to actualizing that vision was a living meditation, a practice of living meditation, a journey of mind purification, mind purification. That means releasing identification to beliefs that are not authentic and true to who I truly am, true self-acceptance. You are love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. The identification is released on the journey to actualizing the vision. The beliefs that are not true to the truth that you are, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, are released on the journey to actualizing the vision. Actualizing means materializing it in physical form. Once the vision was actualized, the definite chief aim was actualized, I began to understand the true nature of thyself through the practice of living meditation, being in flow, on the journey to actualizing the vision. Now, during that time, I was fluctuating in and out. By that I mean remaining in my divine center, in flow, or identifying, and then based on identification, resulting in unnecessary experiences and appearances. They were only necessary, I could say, to bring awareness to the belief. So they weren't necessary to actualizing the vision. What we genuinely desire is the path of least resistance to actualizing the vision. Yet the journey to actualizing the vision may be paved with revelations of what has been identified with, the beliefs in which we have the opportunity to release it through auto-suggestion, any modality that works for you. For me, it's auto-suggestion. I use it for pretty much everything. I use auto-suggestion to transmute, transmuting anxiety into excitement. I also practice emotional release, allowing the emotions to be, not suppressing or repressing emotions. Now, after that definite chief fame was actualized, I set another one. There was a number of them that I said, actually, a few that I recall are, number one, moving up in my corporate career, which actualized, leaving my corporate career and starting my IT business and building that to success, which I did from 2009 to 13, then moving into consulting and building my consulting practice to success, which I did from 2013 onwards. And 2013, I also started the YouTube channel, which in 2019, I focused more on what is directly and indirectly related to this channel. So on all these journeys to actualizing the vision, mind was purified through living meditation. Now, what ended up happening more so is deeper, more profound experiences of what we can call self-transcendence. So to recap thus far, true self exists beyond, that is who you are, exists beyond the personal identity and the identifications to the I. The true self is love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. The true self, once accepted 
and embodied more so each day. By simply committing to a vision and remaining committed to it till it's actualized, transforms the self-image and the identity, the self-image being part of the identity. Identity includes also your view of the world in relation to environment, behaviors, capabilities, people, etc. As that is transformed, you realize more of and actualize more of as the outer expressions of life, the oneness with the Father, self-transcendent. So Maslow, in the later stages of his career, prior to that, he had self-actualization as the top of the pyramid. He must have also had similar experiences like this and included self-transcendence on the top. Self-transcendence is experienced as a profound oneness, harmonious, loving relationship with all people, environment, beyond the personal identity, beyond that it is known experientially and it is lived experientially as the true nature of thyself, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, which manifests as wonderful relationships that reflect accordingly, wonderful business, career, hobbies, etc., that reflect accordingly. That in the presence of others, when we perform our creative initiative, when we put out our creative acts, others, like it was said in the Emerald Tablets, it is like an Emerald Tablet, your creative expression, because it is said in the Emerald Tablet of Thought, the light within you will cause the light in this tablet to respond. In other words, your creative expression, your business, whatever it may be, your relationships being as you are and also a creative expression of being as you are into a physical form, inspires others, awakens others to the same realization, the same realization that you have. You, through your living meditation, appear to transform others. Yet, it is not the individual that's doing it. I and the Father are one. I can't of myself do nothing. The Father within doeth the work. So, that's stated. By being as you are, true self-acceptance, committing to a vision and actualizing it, the true self-image arises. It reforms the former self-image. The true identity arises in mind as the individual identity that's true and authentic. So, let's go back to the quote here. He said, self-realization is the knowing in all parts of the body, mind, and soul that you are now in possession of the kingdom of God. So, what I realize is that what we truly desire is to know thyself, realize thyself, realize the true nature of thyself, actualize thyself, and in the process, we experience self-transcendence. It automatically manifests as, practically speaking, others appearing to transform in our presence or through our creative expressions. Exactly like how we spoke about authentic personal magnetism. It manifests as an appearance of authentic personal magnetism, true self-acceptance, and true self-image transformation within, manifests as the outer expressions of life, one of which we can call authentic personal magnetism. I'll link in the description to a recent video where we discuss. Now, in the book Psycho-Cybernetics, he articulates what appears as the journey of mind purification and the transformation of the self-image to be a mere reflection of the true self. Hence why I titled the mind map, True Self-Image. So he starts with a vision, such has been my experience. He said, your built-in success mechanism must have a goal or a target. This goal or target must be conceived of as already in existence now 
either in actual or potential form. And by potential form, it is what we refer to in our Neville Goddard conversations as all things existing now in imagination. Number two, the automatic mechanism is teleological. That is, it operates or must be oriented to end results or goal. Do not be discouraged because, let's say, if the means whereby were not apparent. I can of myself do nothing. The Father would then do it the work. He says it's the function of the automatic mechanism to supply the means whereby, where you supply the goal. So you simply accept, I am that. He says, think in terms of end result, and the means whereby will often take care of themselves. Again, I can of myself do nothing. The Father would then do it the work. And so, some way, somehow, it's actualized. Now, number three is very important. This is where the mind purification occurs on the journey to actualizing the vision, as well as self-transcendence occurs. He says, do not be afraid of making mistakes or of temporary failures. So, not being afraid of making mistakes or temporary failures is looking at the outer experiences of life and labeling them as mistakes or failures, when it's actually mind purification. It's a living meditation. If what appears is labeled as a mistake and one shames or condemns themselves, that's identification. Be still and know that I am. Release that identification. All in harmony and in contribution to actualizing your vision. True self-acceptance. And so he says, server mechanisms achieve a goal through feedback, which one could label as negative or positive feedback. That's all labeling happening within through the I. The Father is love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. The individual, through belief identification, may automatically start to label it as negative feedback. He says, or by going forward, making, again, what appears seemingly as mistakes and immediately correcting course. So in other words, we take the vision and we impress that on the subconscious mind. The unseen power of the subconscious mind takes that vision and some way, somehow, externalizes it for you. Appears to animate all that appears to reflect the vision. We remain in our flow, living meditation. And in relation to what appears, if one labels it as in a way where they shame or condemn themselves, that's identification. We release identification in the moment. And if identification seems to persist, auto-suggestion. Release identification through auto-suggestion. Number four, he says, skill learning of any kind is accomplished by trial and error. So this is, again, individual interpretation. Everything happens automatically. You get insights, hunches, inspirations, videos would appear. For example, when I was learning snowboarding, people would show up at the exact ideal time, synchronistically, to share with me insights on optimizing my performance. The exact videos would show up on my feed on YouTube. The exact information would show up contributing to actualizing the vision. And as I would go through the physical experience of snowboarding, questions would arise and they would be answered within or information would be presented externally to answer those questions. So thus, he says, we must let our creative mechanism do its work and not jam it by becoming concerned or anxious. Again, how does one not be concerned or anxious? No one is walking around consciously, I believe, trying to be concerned or anxious unnecessarily. This is happening based on identification to subconscious beliefs. They're unnecessarily worrying or being anxious. If they bring awareness to the belief that's generating that physical experience, experience in the body, experience through emotions, experience as thoughts in mind generated from that belief and release identification to it, they won't force anymore. As he says, by not attempting to force it by too much conscious effort. The conscious effort, unnecessary conscious effort, we can say, is a manifestation of identification of particular beliefs that generating conscious effort, unnecessarily. A person believes, whether they're honest with themselves or not, that stress, frustration, and 
whatever related to that is the way they believe they will actualize their vision. They're stuck in their head, we could say, operating as the identification programming of the I. When I and the Father are one, and the Father does all, takes care of all, individual prays, and the Father appears. So the question worth asking then is the individual praying for unnecessary stress and frustration, thus generating those appearances. As he says, we let it work rather than forcefully trying to make it work. We see the distinction here between power versus force. Now, what happens as we remain on course on the journey to actualizing the vision? The self-image transforms. This is how you transform the self-image. This is how you transform the identity. By accepting your vision as fact in imagination and allowing God to take care of everything, including the mind purification. Because we're always meditating. This entire experience is a meditation. Again, by that I mean, the world first appeared to you and persists to appear the way it does to you based on identification. If you cling to appearances, they appear to cling to you. If you dissolve identification, the appearances disappear. The appearances of the world are the effects of the one universal cause and substance of the entire phenomena of life, that I am. The all that knows all, sees all, animates all, and appears as all that appears through prayer. The all in all, that is the all, the Father. By transcending the identifications of the I, it is realized that I and the Father are one. I has then found the promised land and rests in God, rests assured in God. I and the Father are one. And then realizes that through their own individual mind, they choose what Father appears as. Again, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses, Joshua 1.3. So we understand then, to a deeper degree, what it is meant experientially, to physically experience the realization of thyself. You have realized thyself. You know yourself to be transcendent to identity, self-image, values and beliefs, capabilities, behaviors, and environment. You receive within your true understanding of thyself. Know thyself to be love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. And you commit to actualizing that. As he says, self-realization is the knowing in all parts of the body, mind, and soul. Full integration. I like to say physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual as one. As he says, that you are now in possession of the kingdom of God. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You could say, now is where all power is to realize thyself, realize thy true nature of thyself, actualize the true nature of thyself in and as the outer expressions of life as far as the senses perceive. Self-transcendence and loving harmony with all people, environment, all aspects of the outer expressions of life. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.